The Mario movie has been nominated for three awards at a major award show for movies and TV. Can't wait to dive into that. We have some brand new news for the Legend of Zelda franchise, especially in regards to how Nintendo makes Zelda games considerations they make and clarifications on things that will either make you happy or just make you a little sad. Beyond all of this, I do have some brand new information for you regarding Nintendo Switch 2. Oh boy, it's gonna be a great show today. I am so excited, I'm, oh, I can't wait. So you know what, screw it. Let's get into our first topic. <laughs> Of course, that topic is going to be the Mario movie being up for three Golden Globe Awards. Oh man, this is so exciting. So yeah, it's up for Best Animated Motion Picture, of course. Best Original Song with Peaches by Jack Black. Oh, and this is a cool one. Cinematic and Box Office Achievement. So I don't really know how these categories are exactly voted on. Never really paid much attention to the Golden Globes, even though I consume a lot of movies and TV shows. But hey, the Mario movie up for three awards. This is probably just the first of many places we're going to see the Mario movie be up for awards. But I'm just really excited for this. And you know what? Hopefully it wins one of these awards. I don't know which one. I don't even know which one I would want it to win. But it would be nice to see the Mario movie at least take one. I mean, it's the second highest grossing animated film of all time. For it to not win one award would be quite strange. Then again, look, we have like the game awards every year. and We do betting specials and all I do is keep losing. In fact, now I have to wear a Boston Celtics jersey on a podcast because I lost yet another bet for the game awards. So... I guess if the Mario movie doesn't win anything, it's just joining me and recognizing how you can be pretty awesome, but still just never quite win. But you know what is winning? Well, subscribing to the channel. You can help us get to 150,000 subscribers. That's our next big subscriber milestone goal. And if you do subscribe, I hear all new subscribers are getting some Oreo cookies raining on them from above. Who knows? Maybe it's Chips Ahoy instead, but for now, it's just Oreos because... That's all I have in my house. Oreos. Mmm. Now we have to dive into some quotes from Eiji Aonuma. You guys know we've been covering his various interviews and different individual videos, and we have some other videos on related quotes, but today we wanted to bring you something a bit fresher from Aonuma, adding some clarification he gave IGN in on how they make Zelda games, and in particular, the considerations they put in for the Zelda timeline. Hey, editor, put in some uh, CDI Zelda footage because, look, you guys are tired of seeing all the normal Rowan Link stuff or Tears of the Kingdom gameplay and trailers. Yeah, you want to see some CDI. Let's read these quotes quick. I think just as you say, this is a series that really lends itself well to each person playing, then thinking back and interpreting the story elements in their own way. We have these major players in each game with Zelda and Ganon and Link and they each surface and play their roles in potentially slightly different ways in each title. But personally, I don't like to put too much stock in the chronology of the series because from the design perspective, that can kind of box us in and limit where we're able to take the story as we continue to make games in the series. And I do think it's something that is best for people to interpret on their own. Yeah, I was kind of agreeing with many of the things you said. So the big takeaway here is obviously, like we kind of talked about in a prior video, they don't really care about the Zelda timeline. So when Tears of the Kingdom came out and it caused all this controversy because it sort of gave a completely new origin story for Hyrule and the founding of Hyrule, a different origin story than happened in Ocarina of Time or Skyward Sword. It's very interesting that when that happened, one of the biggest things you saw hardcore Zelda fans be is upset because are you retconning the Zelda series? What are you doing? Is this a different timeline now. So it's kind of crazy because all they're basically saying is, hey, we don't like the timeline. We just want to make great games. But if you want to interpret things and have fun, go at it. So, hey, what was up with that Hyrule Historia business then? I don't know, probably just pressure from the fan base to try to cobble this together. And even in there, they just note that the series is a series of legends that are always changing over time 
Meaning the timeline's always fluid because they just don't care about time. So it is what it is, folks. <sighs> All I know is the last two Zelda games are my favorite Zelda games. So whatever you're doing, Nintendo, I guess keep it up. You know, just like Link when he's uh, talking about Dodongos. I can't wait to bomb some Dodongos. Now today we're going to be talking also a little bit about Fortnite. And this is not a story that I really suspected to be talking about. But it is interesting because it could make some logistical sense. And we actually have a good idea on why it hasn't happened. So look, Fortnite does crossovers with all these different characters and IPs and companies. And one really popular company they've never done an official crossover with is Nintendo. But it turns out they've actually been trying very hard and we learned this in a new interview with Axios. So Epic employee Sax Parsons said in an interview with Axios that they have been actively pursuing a partnership with Nintendo and likened how hard they have been pushing for it to be like, and I'm quoting here, I don't know what the word for like making a diamond is. They have their strategy and we have ours. But he does note they haven't given up on making that partnership possible. So Fortnite wants to team with Nintendo. They want to, you know, cross it over, get your Zelda, your Metroid, your Mario's, and all of that into Fortnite. And before you tell me, well, 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 they would never let Mario shoot a gun. Well, hello, Mario plus Rabbids, Kingdom Battle, and Sparks of Hope. So we can just set that one aside. That being said, I think the holdup, as he notes, is that difference in strategies. And they have different strategies on how they do stuff. Nintendo has crossed over with other games before, such as Rocket League. But there was a limitation with Rocket League. You could only get the Mario-related Rocket League DLC and the cosmetics on a Switch. You couldn't buy it on any other platform. And when you did cross-platform play with other platforms, players on Xbox, PlayStation, PC could not see your Mario themed cars. So, I mean, they could see your car, it just show up as something more generic. So what's very interesting here is that Nintendo was okay with it existing so long as it just stayed on their platform and only with their gamers. All of Fortnite's available, you know, cosmetic items and all that, the theming has always been available on every platform. And I think that's just a company standard. So we're seeing a difference in those strategies and that is why there probably hasn't been a partnership. Now, personally, I would like to see Nintendo just say, screw it and throw tradition out the window and give us the amazing partnership I think everyone wants. In fact, they could use it to help promote things like the Zelda movie to a new audience or um, a certain upcoming platform launch that you might want to let PlayStation, Xbox, and PC gamers know about in Nintendo Switch 2. Now, speaking of Nintendo Switch 2, I wanted to get a bit closer to the camera and be a bit more personal on this because I am about to provide you something from one of my own sources on Nintendo Switch 2. And I'm very careful when I put myself out there as a source on things. Oftentimes, it is just something I have heard uh, and I've heard long time ago, or it's just reaffirmation of things that we've already reported on or came from other outlets. As an example, I have my own sources that told me, yes, Nintendo showed those demos at Gamescom, but that's not really worth me covering and making a big fuss about because we already had other sources independent from us out there reporting that we already brought to you. So it didn't really matter. But now I have heard something that is an update on something I was told a long time ago, but now it pertains to Nintendo Switch 2. And this is about a massive third-party game coming to Nintendo Switch 2 and only Nintendo Switch 2, not Nintendo Switch. Now, you guys may recall years ago, I mentioned that I had gotten wind of, had heard directly from some very high up sources that Red Dead Redemption 2 at one point was in development for Nintendo Switch. And this never actually came to fruition. It never actually came out. We, we did get Red Redemption 1, you know, I think it was remastered or remake on Nintendo Switch, but we did not get Red Dead Redemption 2. And I always said, I didn't think it was actually gonna happen, but they did attempt to bring it to Nintendo Switch and there was active development on it at one point. Well, that active development has shifted to Nintendo Switch 2. And I don't know if this is coming next year on Switch 2, the year after, I'm not sure when it's going to come out, but I have been told, and I am very confident in my sourcing on this, that Red Dead Redemption 2 is coming to Nintendo Switch 2. Um, 
These also happen to be similar sources that reaffirm for me that Nintendo Switch 2 is coming next year. So I'm just gonna sit back and let you guys marinate in that. I don't know if it's something you care about. It is putting myself out there a little bit. I don't do it very often, but when I do, I'm pretty damn confident because I actually directly know these sources on a personal level. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next video.